privilege was asserted. And I yield back. Chair, thanks, the gentlelady. Gentlelady yields back. The gentleman from South Carolina is recognized. You know, I've sat here for, what, two hours, probably going to be three or four. You know, and listen to these smoke screens that my friends on the other side of the aisle are saying. They bring up the trial of Donald Trump, convicted felon. Really? By, ju by a judge that is a known anti-Trumper? You jury. bring out, you bring by out jury, the, Mr. Nadler, I've got the floor. If, if you're going to interrupt, Mr. Chairman, call him down when he interrupts. It's my time, and I'll let you respond, but I'm tired of this. You, you talk over everybody. It's so rude of you. But he, look, you bring up the smokescreen of Hunter Biden. Uh, I think we're here to talk about a video. Hunter Biden, uh, it is kind of you know, strange. A gun charge? What about the L fake LLCs that he's gotten money from China? What about the, fake, the, the millions he got in paintings? We don't know who contributed to him. What about, um, I mean, you can name a lot of other charges, but we're not talking about that. And I'm tired of these smoke screens. You're talking about the miscarriage of justice. It really is. Uh, and Ms. Hagerman, you bring up a very good point, the fact that uh, we're to trust what they say, that the transcript is real, and the, the audio has no bearing on it. I don't understand. As, as uh, our chairman said, they're putting up a fight to prevent the American people from seeing, hearing the video and using these lame excuses about altering, that Jordan altered some, some tape somewhere. I don't know how you alter a, a audio tape. Uh, can you tell me who has got the audio tape? And I think the chairman had a valid point. Do they still exist? This administration is lawless when it comes to obeying the law. What I can say is that the information was gathered by Mr. Herr being the, uh, the, the investigator in this through the Department of Justice. And that's why the action has been brought against Mary Garland, because Mary Garland is the one that has the audio tape, is my understanding. Now, I could be corrected on that, but that has been my assumption, because he was the person who appointed... Mr. Her to conduct this investigation, and I believe that the report was directed to him. So that has been my assumption throughout this that they would have the the audio tape, and uh, uh, they've released they released the transcript. So if he doesn't have it, or if he's destroyed it, that's that's a serious. Uh, or I, if they alter it, or, <clears throat> or, or omit, or whatever they do with it. But are you comfortable? I mean, are you feel? Well, you or Mr. Comer, do y'all feel the tape still exists? Because they're going to a big extreme to defer and try to prevent the American people to, from hearing it. Well, all I can say on their behalf is I sure hope so. Mr. Comer, Mr. Nall, I'll get, I'll, I'll get to you. Let me just. It's my hope and it's my understanding that they still exist. Hopefully they didn't disappear like the cocaine at the White House. Hopefully they're still in existence and haven't been destroyed. Mr. Nall, you want to in a quick yeah, way respond it, to it? There is no reason to believe that the tapes don't still exist. I would point out again that the president has asserted executive privilege, and the proper forum for disputing the executive privilege is in court, not by a contempt citation. Um, once the president asserted executive privilege, it's not up to Mr. Uh, uh, the Attorney General, Mr. Garland, to present the tape or not. Uh, it's up to whoever wants the tape, in this case the committee, to go to court and contest the executive uh, privilege. I'd also want to point out on a separate matter that uh, Ms. Hagman brought up, that Hunter Biden was tried and convicted by a jury of his peers. It's not about Hunter Biden. Well, this is about the, this is about the that, tape, Ms. And, Natalie. And she brought up a number of things, and that the president, or the former president, was convicted by a, uh, a jury of his peers, and the questions she brings, and by the way, he made uh, evidentiary rulings for the defense and against the defense. Um, and whether he, his evidentiary rulings were correct, whether his decision to exclude certain uh, witnesses was correct, will be decided on appeal in the appellate division or maybe in the Court of Appeals of the State of New York. And it's perfectly legitimate to question that. 
but it's not legitimate to question the legitimacy of the trial because that's a, that those questions are appellate questions and will be answered by the appellate court. Well, it didn't work R Richard Nixon. Once, the te once, his, uh, once it was out, the transcript was out, he couldn't claim executive privilege. But I guess that's why the major news outlets are suing to get something that you're trying to hide that you don't want the American people to see. It's really an insult to the American people that, that you're going to these links uh, having all this, these words about all these other uh, trials that have nothing to do with this. Let me run down the timeline. timeline. And I, this is something I don't understand. Uh, Chairman Comer, I mean, Mr. Comer, you, on Jan February 12th, you sent a letter requesting all the documents and communications, including the videos, including the autos. Uh, on fe February 16th, the DOJ responded uh, to you stating that they were being gathered. Um, on February 27th, the, the Judiciary and Oversight Committee issued identical subpoenas to uh, Garland for relevant information about the transcripts and, and about the, the audio. Uh, the return date was March 7th, and then the DOJ produced an incomplete set of documents comprising only correspondence exchange, no audio. On March 9th, the committee notified the DOJ that its production was inadequate. And as an accommodation, you offered to extend the date of production uh, to, for, the, for the audio on, to March 11th at 3 o'clock. On March 11th, the DOJ informed the committee that documents were undergoing review by the agency, interagent, they would not meet the committee's deadline. Why is he getting extension after extension? I don't think Steve Bannon got that. I don't think um, uh, Peter Navarro got that. And I think you've demonstrated uh, factually the great lengths we've gone to to try to work with them uh, to help them comply. It shouldn't take any time, but we've gone to great lengths. We've gone above and beyond uh, to make it as convenient as, as possible for them to turn over uh, those tapes which we lawfully subpoenaed. And then on April 15th, the committee did respond, just said they were not going to produce them. Didn't have to. That is such a, what are the consequences? What do you think? And I think we will vote this out of committee. And I think, I hope the, the House will pass this. What's the consequences for Garland doing this? Will he be going, going to jail or well, will he seen, get, a, get we've off? Well, we've seen Merrick Garland has held others uh, accountable for being held in contempt of Congress. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. He has a, he has set a precedent Merrick Garland set a precedent of going after people uh, who Congress has held in contempt for not complying with uh, subpoenas. It's just isn't that complicated. Right. Audio doesn't lie. Audio, he either said it, uh, and they're, they're going to these links to smokescreen every other case, everything else to try to prevent this to delay. Real quickly, Mr. Mr. Yeah, I just want to point out when you talk about the smokescreen that the senior most career official at DOJ fellow named Brad Weinsheimer, submitted a declaration stating that he listened to every word of the audio files and, quote, the, the interview transcripts are accurate transcriptions of the words of the interview contained in the audio recording. That's in uh, paragraph 14 of the Weinsheimer declaration. So the allegation of the transcripts were altered in many ways. Mr. Allen, what's that got to do with, what, what is that man's, uh, his interpretation of the, the audio and the transcript, what's that got to do with anything? This is just release the tapes, let other people. Why are all the news networks having to sue to get Garland to come? To as, I, as I said before, the reason that there is a hesitation about giving the uh, audio to the Judiciary Committee is that the Judiciary Committee has previously altered audios uh, to produce, um, um, in effect, fake versions uh, of Miss um, um, uh, We're not talking, ab We're not so, talking about so, that. Well, we are talking about <laughs> that because there is a fear that if the audio was given to the Judiciary Committee, the Judiciary Committee, Mr. Jordan or the people working for him, will alter that audio okay. as they did for Mr. Ms. Jankowitz's okay. audio That's and produce a, a, a inaccurate um, um, uh, audios. Uh, Ms. Hagen, can you respond to that? Sure. That accusation is untrue. Well, thank you for bringing this. Uh, this is this is an embarrassment, to be honest with you. This is an embarrassment with what they're what they're doing. Uh, I yield back, Mr. Chairman.